I just don't just avoid it just avoid saying that word do not say it just avoid it so today I thought it would be fun if we looked at 10 words that have culturally different meanings across the pond ponds well it's actually because I usually have to go to another country to get back over to America so yeah it's probably probably ponds in Ireland we have a lot of slang terms as do you over in America and the cultural differences are kind of amusing at times to say the least why am I talking like a robot today? No one knows. Before we get into the video, do be sure to subscribe, otherwise the St. Patrick's Day Parade is gonna be canceled. Oh no, wait. It has been. Today's video is brought to you by friend of the show, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based RPG done right. It's free to play and it's now available on PC and can be played across devices. The highly anticipated Battle Pass Season 1 is now live and you can win awesome rewards including free energy refills, gems, upgraded artifact sets and new epic and legendary champions by fulfilling the daily and weekly challenges. <gasps> There's so much stuff I'm actually running out of breath. I wouldn't consider myself a gamer but this game has kept me amused on some of those long haul flights recently. It's not just for people who are amazing at gaming. Although, you know, I'm not bad. I'm pretty bad. As usual, Raid are always updating the game and they've added a new Battle Pass event which has made stuff really interesting. So if you're looking for something new to do on your phone, click on the link in my description below because I'm giving away 200,000 silver and one free champion, Tree Feller. All that treasure will be waiting for you for the next 30 days, so why not just give it a try? Me and a lot of people in my clan are enjoying playing it. Thanks again, Raid, for supporting this channel. Now on with the list. The first one I'm going to get out of the way because we definitely encounter this word a lot on this channel It's the word crack and still I get people in the comments going crack. What are you talking about crack? So crack is not a recreational drug. Wait, no crack isn't a recreational drug. I need to brush up on my drugs I don't know much about drugs, but as I understand it crack in America is a drug But in Ireland crack is good fun. We're having a good time. It's crack the crack You've probably heard me mention before that in Ireland you will do something for the crack. This is generally speaking a good reason to do something that is just silly. It's just a silly thing to do. Oh, you're silly. We love a bit of silliness on this channel, so there's a lot of crack to be had here, but not the American kind. We don't know much about that at all. I think it's the white powdery stuff. The next one is if an Irish person says they're <laughs> Yep, I used the really, really bad word. Just use your imagination there. It does not mean that they have been engaged in coitus. Coitus, it means intercourse. If an Irish person is f***ed, oh, the beeping. It means that they're really, really, really tired or that they're in bits. I guess that's another Irish phrase I should explain. Just really tired. Wow, use your imagination there, Diane. Okay, Diane. Okay, Diane. So I could turn around and say to you, hey, how are you feeling today? And you could go, oh, I'm absolutely f And that just means you're really tired, which is, you no, know, you've had a hard week. You deserve a rest. Go have a pint. Or if you're an alcoholic, have some chocolate, that works too. The next word that often causes confusion when I go to America is the word gas. No, I'm not referring to the foul smelling odor coming from one's arse. Not mine, because I don't do that, because I'm a girl. This is exclusively a man one, only men do that. Uh, sure, sure. No, in Ireland, if something is gas, it means it's really, really, really funny. You could actually be a gas lad, so you're just a fella who's very, very funny. That's actually one of the highest compliments you can pay somebody if you say they're gas. Whereas if I said that in America, yeah, confusion. Also, I never use the word gas when I'm in America referring to petrol. I always say petrol. I don't know what that is because there are other words that I've definitely transferred across, but I just, I always say petrol, not gas. Unless it's diesel and then it's diesel. The next word that causes some confusion is the word ride. In Ireland, this can mean one of two things. So it can mean the kind of rude thing and also it can mean just the generic thing that it means. You can ride in a car. You can ride on an automobile. That is a car. You can ride a bicycle. I don't because the last time I did that, my legs hurt for two weeks. I hate this freaking bike. This stupid bike. It's a lot harder when you're an adult. Did you know that? When I was a kid, I'd just be riding my bike all around the whole world all day long. Nothing. Then I just boom, turned into an adult and just, ah, pain. But anyway, in Ireland, ride can also mean to uh, get it on with somebody. You can have the ride, or you can ride someone. You can go riding, which is just, you're a bit of a man whore, or just a whore whore. They should change that, that seems a little sexist. But yeah, it's used in your vernacular in a way you would think. So the past tense of it is rode, I rode that person. It's a funny one, isn't it? It's like you're referring to the person as a horse of some kind. It's quite derogatory, I suppose. Oh uh, yeah. The next one is a word that I've seen on my videos get translated in the auto captions 
really, really wrong. And it's a word that I used maybe once or twice in America and because I had to immediately explain it, I never used it again. It's a word that causes chaos when you say it. It's the word knickers. There's a K in there, trust me, there's a K. You can imagine the word that people think that you might be saying when you say it. I'm referring to a lady's undergarments on her nether regions, her panties, as Americans would say. But there is a very bad word that you should not go around saying that it sounds very like. And because in America, they don't commonly use that word, Nick curse. It's just advisable that you not say it over there because you're gonna start something that maybe you don't want to start. <laughs> yeah, just don't, just avoid it. Just avoid saying that word. Do not say it, just avoid it. Bit dramatic, but you know, I really strongly recommend you don't use that word. Just say panties, even though that's maybe the silliest word I've ever heard of for a lady's undergarments. I don't know, it just seems comical. Lingerie. I'm not French. The next word you shouldn't really say in America, but some of them actually use it in both ways there too, I think. Let me know below in comments if I'm right about that. It's the word bum. In Ireland, and indeed in the UK, the word bum is something that, it's your arse. I was gonna get complicated with that, but then I was like, they know what an arse is. It's your arse, it's your bottom. It's what I'm sitting on right now and what editor Diane sits on all day whilst editing. Bingo bango. But in America, a bum is usually referring, in a derogatory sense, to somebody who doesn't do work. It's not a nice thing to call somebody a bum. I think they used to say it on Married with Children, that somebody was a bum. Hey, if Elvis was married to you, he'd sweat me. Also in Ireland, you might say, can I bum a cigarette off you? Which is confusing for people in America. Excuse me, what? The next word we're gonna talk about, and I haven't used this one since I was a teenager, and I actually don't know if teenagers use it anymore. If you're an Irish teenager, probably not, that's not my demographic, but if you are, let me know below in comments if you use this word still, I don't know. I remember we used this word and it definitely caused me confusion initially, and then it just became part of my vernacular that I used all the time. It's the word meat. So in Ireland, at one point in time, if somebody said, will you meet my mate? They were actually asking if you would kiss their friend. To meet is to kiss someone. You can be meeting someone, so that means you're kissing someone on the regular. Kiss, kiss, kiss! It's not a word I as an adult would use. And again, you would use the past tense of that. So you'd say, I met him behind the bike shed after riding the bicycle that hurt my legs for a fortnight. There's something real sneaky about the word meet. Like, I don't know, it's not, it's not a loving word, but it's not derogatory either. Like you could definitely start out meeting somebody when you're a teenager and then it could turn into a relationship. And then you could be one of those people who ends up marrying that person. Marrying your childhood sweetheart, what's that like? You're like a unicorn. I'm not a unicorn. The next one is the word arseways. You can do something arseways but somebody in America might have a hard time understanding what this means. Cause they've already caught on to what arse means. So well done, you've done that. But then we have the word arseways just to confuse you even further. If you do something arseways, it means you've done it like the wrong way. So I could be screwing a bottle top back on, but I could do it arseways cause it doesn't connect and then all the drink still comes out of the thing. Ah, uh, analogies. You should think them through before you do them. You could put your jumper on arseways. So it's actually back to front. It's on arseways. The origin of arseways, I've got to think, is because your arse is down there and your head is up there. And the right way would be headways, but we don't use that term. I don't know. Hang on, I'm gonna look it up. Arseways. I can't actually find the origin of the word arseways, but I'm gonna think it's something to do with that. Your arse being down there and your head being up there. The next word you're not gonna want to use in America is the word queer. Queer sounds an awful lot like queer. Queer is a word that is sometimes used to describe somebody's sexuality. As I understand it, and I may be talking out my arse because I'm not a person within that community, I believe queer used to be a negative term, but now it's part of the whole identifying thing and they've re-embraced it and stuff. The origin of this word is probably a negative thing that comes from the word queer. Actually, I don't know why I said probably, I know it is, I looked this up. So generally speaking, the word queer can mean you've done something a little bit 
strange. And that's how that word queer used to be used as well, a person who was in society considered strange. But actually the word queer can also be used for something kind of good or something you're unsure about. So you might say something like Lewis Capaldi has a bit of a queer voice in him. A global phenomenon, that's what I am. It's an unusual voice but I like it. It's not typical, it's not the norm. But yes, you might want to avoid saying it in America to cause confusion and just getting into one of those conversations that you don't want to have. Just avoid that word. And the final word that you should avoid saying in America to avoid causing confusion is this word. Now, if you're American and you've never heard it before, you might be saying gee bag. That's wrong. The word is actually pronounced gee bag. And it's a put down. It's a big put down. When I actually go into the literal translation of this, it's really gross. Ugh. To refer to a person as a bag of ghee is extremely insulting. I'm going to read the Urban Dictionary's definition of it. It's a person characterised as having been the recipient of a large amount of sperm. Usually female. I have never heard it used in that way. Usually a gay bag is just like a person you really don't like. Oh, that person's a proper gay bag. I should have probably said before this video began that you may not want to have small people around, but you know, this is the internet. Be more careful if your small person is around. There are worse things on the internet than me. Trust me. The world's a scary place, I admit it. So if you've been watching this channel a long time, you know the word gay means a lady's private area. Don't know why I said area like that, just did. Yes, I was trying to be delicate with it. Quite right. And a bag is, well, it's a bag. So saying somebody is a gi bag means that they're just, they're just, their sole existence is to be a big vagina. But moreover, we just say somebody's a gi bag if we don't like them. My head of class teacher in secondary school was a massive gi bag. The person who shouldered me in town yesterday was a massive gi bag. And the lad who took the last cold Diet Coke out of the fridge in the spa was a humongous gi bag. So you see, it's not gender specific anymore. And that about sums it up for today's list. Those are words you should probably not say in America just to avoid causing confusion and maybe people thinking you're a little bit rude. So yeah, that's it for today. Have a great weekend to see you on the other side. Bye. No, I'm not repur- now I've never heard to avoid causing confusion and maybe, maybe that's it for today. I'm sure somebody out there is offended by this list and if so, they just walk around all day just going, because ah, this channel isn't offensive and those people are just gee bags.